How's it going today guys? So today we were talking about 10 different ways that you can think more like Steve Jobs. So what I did in order to uh, prepare for this video is I was kind of just reading a bunch of different articles and resources about his life and kind of the way he thought, the way he ran Apple and the way he just um, went about his life. And um, I mean, a lot of people idolize him because of his success with Apple and his success in life in general. And uh, well, the one thing that I believe in is that all successful people, they tend to leave a trail of breadcrumbs that you can follow and kind of model your life more after them. Um, I think it's very important to have a mentor, and that's actually on the list here as well. Steve Jobs famously had a mentor. I have that on number nine here. But it's important to have a mentor and also to follow the success of others. So it's very important to study successful people in order to be successful yourself. So. I was going to write this all on the board, but then as I was doing it, I got like halfway down through it and um, I just figured, you know what, I'll just read it off the paper. I got the list up here. Hopefully you guys don't mind. If you really prefer when I write stuff on the board, make sure you let me know and I'll do that in the future. But just for the sake of convenience, I figured I would just jot stuff down and read off the paper here. But the first way that you can think more like Steve Jobs is to get more, get spiritual, become more a spiritual person. So Steve Jobs was always a spiritual person and he went on a spiritual journey to India where he studied Zen Buddhism with his mentor um, Kobun Chino um, Odagawa. I hope I pronounced that right. If not, I apologize. Uh, but Steve Jobs regularly meditated and relied on intuition for a lot of his decisions both in his personal life and his business life at Apple. So meditation helps you develop that uh, intuition or that gut feeling that tells you when something just feels wrong based on how you feel inside. And he relied on that for a lot of his decisions and he would um, pick up on people just being receptive towards them, kind of getting a feel for them instead of just listening to what they were saying. He kind of connected with them and kind of would determine just based on how they made him feel with his presence or with their presence. Okay, number two is um, you are what you eat is what I put for this one. So Steve Jobs, after his trip to um, India, became a strict vegan. Um, and as you, I'm sure you guys know, foods like um, meat and high fat dairy tend to leave you feeling very groggy and lazy. I'm sure if you've ever like eaten a pizza or a cheeseburger at lunch and then went back to work, uh, you're ready to fall asleep at about like 1.30. So he attributed his his clarity of mind and his energy levels a, a lot to the foods he ate. So he ate, a, he was a raw food vegan, I believe. Um, not just a, I'm, I'm not sure if he was a raw food vegan. That's a little bit different, but I know he was a vegan at the very least. I'll have to look into that if he was strictly eating raw foods. But he, he ate mostly, you know, a plant-based and a grain-based diet, which helped him maintain his energy levels and his clarity of mind and helped him stay focused. Um, and not be feeling groggy and lazy after eating a lot of uh, foods like you know the meats and like the dairy that kind of tends to make you feel that way. Uh, he, he said this is kind of what made him be more productive in life and in many ways was his diet. Uh, number three was uh, Steve Jobs knew how to say no to people. So Jobs was constantly focused on his goals and the goals that he had with Apple. And uh, to him and to a lot of people focus has to mean learning how to say no. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people, they're not trying to do anything wrong, but I mean, people who are not going after a goal um, tend to have a lot of distractions in life, whether it's going to movies or whether it's going golfing or whatever it is, going bowling. So if you're driven and you're really trying to be successful at something, you got to be full time with it. You can't be a part timer. So if you have people in your life that are trying to constantly get you to go out and do things that distract you from your goals and okay yeah let's go to the bar let's go bowling let's do this and that you have to learn how to say no to things and uh, how to stay focused on what's important to you and that was something Steve Jobs was very good at was the ability to say no to people and say no I, I have to work on this side this isn't aligned with my goals and what's going to you know help me become a successful person so he was not a fan of mean, meaningless conversations or parties or any leisure activities for the most part if they weren't helping him towards becoming successful. Uh, he was strictly focused on his company and his personal goals above anything else. Um, number four is to think ahead of the times and be ahead of the curve. So one of the biggest breakthroughs um, at Apple was the uh, computer mouse. And uh, this was an innovation that Jobs had come up with and he adopted it in their first computer. Um, and this was really big for the time. 
And um, that was that was a way for, um, this is how Jobs was. He stayed connected to emerging technologies and trends and kind of thought ahead of the competition and uh, did things that were very innovative at the time. So in order to be successful like him, you have to kind of be a step ahead of everyone else. Um, the saying that I kind of like is, um, don't go where the golf ball was. You gotta go where the golf ball is gonna land. So everybody else is focused on, okay, this is where the golf ball was. Be the person looking up in the air and thinking, okay, based on how hard it was hitting the wind, where is that golf ball gonna land? That's a way you can kind of, that's like an analogy of how you should be thinking kind of ahead of the times and thinking into the future. That's a lot like how Steve Jobs was. Okay, number five is not to burn bridges. Um, Steve Jobs was famously fired from Apple in 1985, and after after that happened, uh, they weren't doing too well as a company, and uh, he was out of the picture for that period of time. But then eventually returned to Apple and returned it to the to the company that it is today. So just because there was some bad blood there, he didn't let it affect um, the future that he had with that company. A lot of people have the habit of um, okay, if they get fired for some job, you know, they badmouth the company and they 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 basically cut off relationships with everybody with that company and uh, that's not how Steve Jobs was you know I mean, I'm sure he did get angry I'm sure he had a temper about it but he wasn't he didn't let that affect his decision to come back to Apple in the future so you can't be somebody who burns bridges if you want to be more like Steve Jobs number six is care about the details so his focus was largely on the design and the aesthetics of a product not just the hardware inside it and he was really one of the first people to really focus on that, um, the actual elegance of the design and making technology sexy, which is like something that was unheard of until then. Um, Jobs was the master of creating an emotional connection with the consumer. Uh, he cared about every single detail, even down to the packaging. I mean, anybody who's opened up an Apple product knows that you know when you're pulling, when you're opening the box for your iPhone, the way that the box fits very well on there, and the way it's all kind of nice and crisp edges. You can tell a lot of thought went into it, and even down to the packaging, you're like, okay, it just makes you think, okay, this is something a little more different, a little higher quality than what you're getting with other people. And I, I'm not saying that, I mean, I do have an iPhone, but I'm not saying that I hate Android or anything. I know that Android versus iPhone battles go on forever, Mac versus PC. All I'm trying to say is, is Steve Jobs really does care about the details, and he cares about the elegance and the design of things as much as he cares about the hardware inside. Um, he was not one who was cheap or somebody who would cut corners with design and stuff like that. He did what he felt needed to be done. Number seven is to be the master of one subject. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs kind of um, become obsessed with the idea of being an entrepreneur. And like the thing is, once they see one opportunity, they kind of see them all over the place. And they dabble in a lot of different things and they try a lot of different things. Um, and a lot of times they're very successful at certain things and a lot of other things are flops. Um, this wasn't really how Jobs was. He kind of focused on what he was good at, which was, for the most part at Apple, the the, uh, the electronic goods. That's pretty much what he focused on through his entire career at Apple. Um, many entrepreneurs are involved in different areas and have numerous successes and failures. Um, Jobs just stuck to what he was good at, and it kind of it showed because of how successful he was. Um, even when he was involved with Pixar, he stuck to the design and the computer technology, not so much other aspects of it. So he always stuck to the one thing that he knew he was good at. So you should focus on what you are doing and not what everybody else is doing. So if your passion, if you have one passion and you know this is really what you want to be doing, but you see somebody else doing something else, even if they're more successful than you at the time, just stick to what you're good at. Because clearly, if you do that long enough, you can be very successful. It's the people who kind of dabble in different areas who may not be as successful because they have a lot of failures and they waste time on certain things that end up being complete flops. Okay, number eight is to partner up. Um, so I'm sure as you guys know, um, Apple was started by Steve Jobs and Steve, Steve Wozniak together. And uh, Wozniak was more introverted and he was the, like the technology guy where Jobs was the front man of the operation and kind of the face of the company. And this was a great relationship for them because um, their strengths and their weaknesses kind of complemented each other. So where Jobs fell short, Wozniak picked up and, you know, vice versa. So that was a good partnership for them. Um, so if you're trying to be successful at something or if you have an idea, bringing on a partner that kind of um, supports you in the areas that you're falling short may not be a bad idea. Um, number nine is to have a mentor. 
So I know I said here before that he had his spiritual mentor um, who taught him Zen Buddhism, but he also had a mentor um, in um, Edwin Land, who was the co-founder of Poland, uh, sorry, Polaroid, not the country Poland, Polaroid cameras. Um, find someone you respect and study that person. So for jobs, this was Edwin Land. Um, and what you want to do is kind of learn what traits you have in common with that person and kind of follow their roadmap for success. Kind of like we're doing here, you know, you look at what Steve Jobs did to become so successful with Apple. Um, that's kind of what you want to do. You want to find somebody that you really look up to and you want to latch on to that person and learn as much as you can from what they went through and how they did things. Um, and then number 10 is to connect with your audience. So Jobs was able to establish kind of an unheard of connection with his target audience or market. And he did this by delivering a very specific message to people. He wasn't distracted by a lot of other things or many different messages. He stuck to one message, which was making technology personal. And uh, he, he was really good with, even though with Apple such a large company, establishing a one-on-one -on -one connection with the customer. So that, that was his main focus was to establish that connection with the audience. But anyways, I just thought that was kind of interesting. I wanted, I do a lot of, um, uh, I do a lot of like studying of successful people and I kind of try to pick up on what their habits were and maybe figure out what areas that myself I can improve in, in my life. And uh, this was just really cool to me because I, I learned a lot about Steve Jobs and things I didn't know about him. I didn't really know he was a vegan. That's very interesting. And I, I know this one here, the learn how to say no is something I struggle with too because you kind of you want to be polite to people, but when you're focused on your own goals and being successful, it, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of noise out there, and there's a lot of distractions in life, and it's hard to be able to say no to people without being rude. And it's something that I know personally, I kind of have to develop those skills to be able to understand when something is just a distraction, and if I'm trying to focus on something else, how to be able to say no to somebody without feeling bad about it or feeling like you're rejecting them. But um, it, it's interesting, and uh, as far as you know, it's just amazing what he did because most people look at technology as the hardware inside and his focus was more on, you know, the connection with people and uh, the elegance and the design of his products and not so much the hardware inside. And I think that's largely why Apple became what they are today. And uh, I just think that there's a lot you can learn about him and he's one of the most idolized entrepreneurs out there. You see a lot of people posting quotes from him and uh, it's just a good person to study. So. If you guys have any other people that you'd be curious about as far as like studying their life and maybe seeing what kind of uh, what kind of messages they followed or what kind of things they did in their lives that were different, um, let me know in the comments below and maybe if there's people who you want to see, I could do a profile like this on them. But uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like and consider subscribing to be notified of future uploads. And I uh, will see you guys in the next video.